Hello everyone and welcome back to the Adventures in Collecting YouTube channel where we take a closer look at the toys we talk about on the show and today, courtesy of our friends over at Diamond Select, we are taking a look at the 1994 Pro. Um, yeah, so this is a 7 inch figure based on um, the, the cult classic film from 1994, um, you know, musician Eric Draven, uh, the crow here. Uh, this is, um, part of some of the new figures that, uh, that Diamond has been putting out. If you listen to our episode, um, featuring Zach from Diamond, um, he mentioned that the way that they were able to get this license, license was actually through the Bruce Lee estate, which makes sense as this is Bruce Lee's late son. Um, and as you can see, we have the new packaging, very similar to the Jack Sparrow figure that we looked at recently. This is the new direction in which um, Diamond is going with their packaging. Personally, I love it. Um, you know, it's 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 not that Marvel Select packaging, you know, a really big blister. Um, I, I really like this box. I think it's also nice for people who do collect, um, you know, mint in box or mint on card. You can really see everything that you have in there. Speaking of which, you know, you can see uh, Eric there with his guitar, we've got the extra hand, we've got uh, the, the the crow, and then we have a, a tombstone. And on the back we have a little description of the film, as well as the figure itself, and it was designed by uh, Yuri Tming, and uh, this one was actually sculpted by Chris Dalberg, so uh, at Lone Horseman Studios on, on Instagram. Um, so I'm really excited to jump into this figure, open them up, and take a closer look. So. Um, grab your guitars, stand in the rain, and let's take a closer look at the crow. <laughs> All right, so here we have the crow, Eric Draven, classic, cult classic, uh, character right here. And as you can see, immediately I can put him into the walk without, <laughs> without any difficulty. I just, I just put him down. Um, I, I and I, I seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. Um... While we're looking at him in the background here, before we get into his paint detail and articulation, let's take a look at accessories. We do not get a base with uh, with the crow, um, but we do get a series of other accessories. So we get the tombstone, which is great, uh, great detail on it. Um, not only does it have you know the texturing on it, and of course Eric Draven, but it even has the inscription, you know, just whisper my name in your heart and I will be there. Um, on the uh, tombstone, there are two pegs. And there is a fun little crow that you can just peg onto the top there. Looks fantastic. Uh, you know, a great little set piece there. And then we also get a flying crow. And as you'll see, there are ways to get this to balance on his shoulder. So um, there is a, a conspicuous peg there, hole in the bottom. But I, I've, I've not yet found anything to actually port that into. But again, like, I, I always think about it with accessories like this with a toy. Um, what else you can use these for and there's there's you know now you just have a sweet big black bird that you could use and then of course uh, Eric Draven would not be complete without his guitar so um, we have his uh, his copy caster <laughs> his his, uh, his his Stratocaster here um, you know not with the Fender headstock of course but uh, you know great detail on this guitar again like think of the other things that you can do with this if you're a toy photographer or if you're doing mashup um, things, you can you can very easily have another character that's that's a one one twelve or you know one ten scale um, play this. So great guitar and he he holds it well, which you'll see. So let's get into the actual figure itself here. So first of all, the detail. Um, starting with the head, it is fantastic. There is just the right amount of hair in his face. His expression is fantastic. Um, the way that they did the makeup is great because it's not stark white. There are spots where you can see the skin underneath. Um, so it doesn't have that perfect, like, clown makeup look to it, which is amazing. Oh, I just realized I forgot an accessory. We couldn't, we couldn't possibly have, have the, have the crow without, without the whole man. So we do have that as well. Um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so going through the rest of the detail, of course, you have the, the trench coat. Trench coat has great detail throughout, um, you know, little seams and lines and wrinkles and folds in it. Uh, the buttons, the, the lapels, it moves nicely. It's a nice soft rubber. There's a slit up the back. Um, you know, he's got the bindings on his hands. 
uh, the ring on the necklace around his around his uh, his neck there, the holes in his shirt, the little kind of just straps and doodads and buttons all throughout uh, you know his outfit here, down to his boots with the um, you know with the tops undone the tops undone the laces are not done all the way, the detail is is really superb throughout this entire figure. Um, now now let's get into the articulation. So um, he can look down pretty substantially. Of course, he can't look up too far. His hair, the sculpt will stop that from, from kind of looking up any further than that. Um, in the arms, we do have full rotation. These are just your standard ball joints. Um, you're not getting too much motion out of them uh, past kind of what you see here. Uh, the sculpt does stop them from moving back past that. We do have single jointed elbows. They get you a little bit past 45 degrees, but kind of just at it. Um, you know, double jointed elbows would have been nice here, but th they are nice. Uh, and then of course you get at the, you get the, the rotation at the, uh, at the wrist there. And there is no swivel on them, just rotation. Uh, in the waist, you do get a upper ab crunch here, not getting too far forward. And then of course you're not getting too far back from it because of the, the way that the trench coat is. But you do get a little bit of side to side out of it, as you can see. And then you do get a, a you can, you know, fully rotate it around. There is also a lower um, ab swivel. So, you know, you do have both there at your disposal. Um, Brandon can do the splits. But he does have those, um, those diamond select hips. So you know, you can kick forward and kick back pretty substantially, but it's tough to get him down into kind of crouched positions because of the way that that articulates. And you see when you try to swivel it up, I'm not going to swivel it too hard because I, I don't want to mess up the plastic, but um, if you try to get him kind of down in, in those like deep crouches, you either get these weird kind of gaps in his, his groin area um, or you simply just don't get him down into the squats like that. He does have a upper thigh cut here, and then he has single jointed knees that do not really do a whole heck of a lot, unfortunately. They don't really go past that 45 degree. Um, and then you do get a rotation and swivel at the boot. And then they're also, yeah, you can also swivel at the, at that single jointed knee. So, what can't you do with him? It is very tough, to, like I said, to get him into kind of these crouched positions. It's it's not really going to work. Um, not not going to be the figure for that. Um, can he walk? He can absolutely do the walk, as you saw kind of right at the top there. Um, because of that, uh, that really nice swivel at the waist and a, a pretty decent um, center of gravity you can you can get him into a walk pretty easily um you know the, the the classic you know arms out pose you know obviously you can get him into it um you know w without a problem so i wanted to show you too the crow that, that he comes with um there's really nowhere for it, it to peg onto on his shoulder so it's really just kind of a balancing act um but it does work you can kind of use his hair as a little bit of a cheat to hold the crow on there but um you know once you once you have it on there it it will stay move it back a little bit there you go um once you have the crow on there it will stay uh which is nice and that does look really cool for display um and then as for the guitar of course you know he is able to hold it and and play look like he's playing um but again without those without the ability to really kind of crouch he's kind of you know but you can still get him into decent poses with it it's it's it is certainly not problematic um you know th this figure does what it what it needs to uh so let's see how he scales with some other figures um so first of all, here's how he scales with another uh, recent Diamond Select 
figure there he is with Captain Jack Sparrow. Looks great. Here he is next to a NECA Ninja Turtle. There you go. You can see how he scales with that, which again, I think looks fantastic. Let's pull Johnny Depp out of the way here. Here he is next to a Marvel Legends Captain America. Again, these are seven inch scale figures, not six inch. So he is going to tower over a six inch scale Marvel Legends. And then lastly, there he is with Bruce Lee. Quite a pair, huh? Um, yeah. So there you have it. There is the crow. Let's flip it around and let's wrap this up. All right. So this is a fun figure, man. This, this, uh, this figure here of, uh, of, of Brandon Lee's uh, crow is, is great. There's some sort of new, I don't know what to say. There's some sort of new energy coming from these diamond figures, uh, starting with the, the Jack Sparrow one and now this and the, the Hulk one that's floating out there. There's kind of this new, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to put my finger on it, but there's something different and it's a good thing. There, there's, they feel a little bit different. The quality of the, um, the paint, the, the plastic, the, just the, the kind of the whole thing, um, has been different with Diamond lately and, uh, it, it's, it's definitely for the good. Um, yeah, there are some things that are a little bit. Uh, unfortunate about this figure, you know, he does have that typical, like we mentioned, you know, the, the diamond select um, hip system, which does hinder him from getting into some of those kind of like crouched poses that, you know, you're used to seeing him in, the things like the single jointed uh, knees. You know, there are definitely some things that that I would change about this figure if if um, if I could, but but ultimately, I, I'm happy with the end result. The the sculpt is great. The overall um, aesthetic is there and this looks like the crow and you know if you for me one of one of the figures that I had always wanted was the the McFarlane movie maniacs crow and I, I missed it and I could never get it and you know I honestly think I have a better version of it now so yeah um this guy is uh is hitting local comic shops and uh you know he's available uh, at online retailers we'll include some links below you know he's around that $30 mark um but yeah this is this has been the crow um as always make sure you hit that subscribe button below so that way you don't miss videos like this of us taking a deeper dive into the toys that we love while you're hitting subscribe hit that bell icon so that way you get notifications when we post new videos uh, while you're subscribing to things, make sure you're following us here at AIC underscore podcast, where we're constantly posting pictures of uh, toy photography, toy news, um, you know, posting when things go up for pre-order and when things are available. We try to stay on top of it as much as we can. And then, of course, our weekly podcast, the Adventures in Collecting podcast. You can find us where all podcasts are found. Simply search for Adventures in Collecting or hit that link in the description below, and it'll take you to our website where you can find all of the things that we just talked about. Uh, stay tuned after the fade for some additional photos here of the crow. And as always, until next time.